here's a scary thought. What if you eat nothing for a week? Whoa! Pizza, pasta, fries… How could you possibly give it all up? Without food, life seems to lose all its color. Plus, after a while, you sort of, you know, croak. But what if you decided to quit eating for an entire week? How would your system respond? And is it as dangerous as it seems? We're going to answer all of these questions today. So make yourself comfortable, grab a snack, <laughs> no not really, and let's get started. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Now you won't miss any of our new videos. Alright, here we go. Number 1. Your body's response to not eating. Let's start off by figuring out exactly what would happen to your body if you decided to stop eating. The changes won't be sudden. Well, wait a minute, then why do they call it a fast? <laughs> Beats me. You see, for the first six hours of your no-food period, everything's gonna be just fine. At this point, your body begins to break down glycogen, which stores energy in your body. Glycogen is the stored form of glucose. Part of this energy is used to fuel your brain. Other parts are for your muscle tissue and red blood cells. But after 6 hours, this process shuts down as the glycogen stores deplete. All these internal processes influence your mood too, and you become angry and hungry. True story, right? But it doesn't stop there. Mm -mm. After 6 hours, your body enters a new phase called ketosis. To put it simply, your body begins to starve since there's not enough glucose in your blood. The only way for your body to survive is to break down fat for energy. <laughs> it sounds exciting, especially if you want to lose weight, but it's way more complicated than that. Sure, your fat breaks into fatty acids, but your brain can't use these acids as a fuel. That's why your brain turns to ketone bodies for energy. And this solution works, but only for some time. Ketone bodies obviously can't replace glucose. All this leads to cognitive functioning impairment. Huh? After three no-food days, your brain goes to another extreme and starts to break down your body's protein. This happens because proteins release amino acids, which can be converted into the glucose your body so desperately needs. Your brain is finally happy, but now it's your body's turn to suffer. It starts to cannibalize itself by destroying muscle mass. Women may experience an additional problem. Their menstrual cycle can pause. In addition, both genders' bone density diminishes and their libido decreases. Hmm, definitely not good news, right? After one no-food week, your immune system becomes extremely weak because it isn't receiving any vitamins or minerals. It can no longer block the path to your system and say, you shall not pass to all diseases and viruses. And this is when it becomes quite scary. Many people can die from disease during this phase of their hunger strike. Their systems become more and more fragile each day as their bodies continue to use every energy source possible until there's nothing left. Such starvation may lead to death after almost a month or up to 70 days. The most common causes of death in such cases are cardiac arrhythmia and heart attacks, which happen due to the tissue degradation in the heart diaphragm. The duration of your life depends on how much water you drink and the amount of fat reserves your body has. And this is the end of the road for everybody. So, the next time you see that sad news footage of refugees and other starving people, well, as Paul Harvey used to say, now you know the rest of the story. Anyway, who would want to even go seven days without food after knowing all this, right? However, there's another side to this coin. Number 2. Water Fasting Nowadays, many people prefer to stick to periodical water fasting. As you've probably already guessed, there's one rule – you don't consume any food and drink apart from water. 
According to specialists, water fasting should last for no more than a couple of days, and a consultation with a doctor beforehand is obligatory. Some people follow this type of fasting for spiritual or religious reasons. However, others decide to take this step because of its long list of benefits. Among them are lower blood pressure, improved insulin and liptin sensitivity, lower cholesterol levels, and weight loss. But the list of people who strictly can't water fast is even longer. You have to remember that such a practice can be potentially dangerous if you suffer from lupus, an eating disorder of any kind, cancer, vascular disease, alcoholism, and many other cases. Once again, you must visit your doctor before you go any further with this option. If you want to water fast because of the weight loss factor, you have another option – intermittent fasting. This means eating nothing or just a few calories for a certain period of time, and then eating as usual for another period. The best example to illustrate this principle is the 5-2 diet, which involves eating regular meals for 5 days of the week and then a quarter of the daily calorie intake for the final two days. The studies show that both approaches give equally strong results, so it's all up to you. There's still one more critical study connected to water fasting. In 1973, a study conducted by the Department of Medicine at Scotland's University of Dundee followed the story of a 27-year-old man who fasted for 382 days straight. The results were fantastic. He went from weighing 456 pounds to 180 pounds. Of course, this was all done under the supervision of doctors and with the usage of vitamin supplements such as yeast, sodium, and potassium. But this was not the most amazing thing. Specialists continued to observe him for five years after his fasting ended, and his weight never went above 200 pounds ever again. This is impressive, right? But where should you start once you decide to water fast? Number 3. How to perform a water fast When your doctor has given you the green light to proceed with water fasting, it's time to get down to business. The first and most important thing is to not jump into a long session of water fasting right away. Mm -mm. Your first experience with it should last about two days. Listen to your body carefully during your first water fasting. If the experience is good and even comfortable, you can go on with longer water fasting intervals. Usually, people who pick a 7-day fasting period experience tiredness and even dizziness at first. But on day 4, many claim that this changes to a feeling of euphoria and mental clarity, which leads to fantastic productivity. As you plan your 7-day water fasting, try to pick a low-stress time in your life. Doing this during exam season or when you're moving house isn't the best time. The same applies to your work. Fasting isn't all sunshine and roses, unless of course you're a florist. It's hard and requires a lot of willpower. During this process, your work productivity can seriously decrease. Starting the water fasting gradually is also a great idea. You can skip breakfast the first week, and then skip breakfast and lunch the second week. You can allow yourself to eat only half a portion of your dinner the third week, and then you'll finally begin your water fasting the fourth week. Your system will definitely appreciate such a gentle approach. In general, men should drink around 13 cups of water, and women should aim for 9 cups daily during the fasting. Allow yourself to sleep for as long as you need, and avoid working out as well. When you're done with your fasting, you should break it slowly. Easily digested foods like soups, juices, pureed fruit, white rice, and mashed potatoes are the best products for your first two days. On day three, Add basic protein sources – eggs, chicken, broccoli, cottage cheese, and others. A couple of days later, you can increase the variety of your menu. The best thing is that you can easily keep your after-fasting weight permanently if you don't go for a burger or pizza as your victorious fasting is finally over meal. <laughs> Most surprisingly, people often say that their desire for junk and unhealthy food decreases after water fasting. 
and they start to appreciate healthy food and its taste way more. One more bad habit goes out the window. But seriously, water fasting isn't just a fun experiment. Your doctor is the one who should decide whether you can go for it or not. If they agree, and you feel like it can be helpful, good luck. Just don't forget to come back to this video and share your results and story with us afterwards. So, what's the longest you've gone without food? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to give us a like and click subscribe to stay on the bright side of life.